but the lure of this legendary ship is too great. In just one year, a submersible similar to Alvin, using similar robotic arms, arrives on the site, not to leave plaques, but to bring pieces of the Titanic home. Was it for this purpose that science had found the wreck? By the autumn of 1986, Titanic's location is no longer a secret, but it still holds many mysteries, and as it turns out, many artifacts, objects that people around the world are interested in seeing for themselves. With little more hard science to do here, the researchers at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution are done with the site. There is some fear that others will disturb the Titanic in its resting place, perhaps even to raise the wreck, since only a handful of submarines are capable of diving to Titanic's depth in 1986, the notion is not taken seriously. But Titanic has a way of making people ignore technological obstacles. It is now just one year later, 1987. Ephremir, the French Oceanographic Institute, is at the Titanic site with their $20 million submersible, Nautil. Their goal is to collect relics in conjunction with a for-profit company funded by international investors. In this expedition, some 1,800 artifacts are brought back to land. Ephremir was involved right from the beginning as they were the co-discoverers on the 1985 expedition. They actually felt an obligation to protect the future expeditions to the wreck. Some of the people involved in locating Titanic become critics of salvaging. I'm not so sure that the recovery that's taken place has really served a historical or archaeological purpose. I mean, they've basically taken the jewels off of the old lady in her grave. But the old lady's still down there. We know all there is to know about that era. And we don't need to have a dish in front of us or a pair of shoes to describe it. So it's a sense of uh, discriminating responsibility. I'm not an expert, but I won't contribute to it personally. Individually, that might just be a teacup in that showcase. But when I place the teacup in juxtaposition with a plate and a knife and a fork, and then I start seeing other things from first class or third class, and I begin to paint the picture of what life was on board, that's the true magic of the artifacts. On the 1987 expedition, the French robot Robin, a counterpart to Woods Hole's Jason Jr., also makes some spectacular trips inside the wreck, but not to pick up artifacts. We would love to go inside and recover artifacts. We don't currently have the technology to do so because we can fly a camera inside. We have no ability to be able to put arms or retrieval methods on something small enough to go inside the wreck. The salvage company goes public in 1993 under the name RMS Titanic Incorporated. Artifacts like the ship's tritone whistle, the largest ever built, are placed on traveling exhibit. 10 million people from London, England to Santiago, Chile attend, and many historians and museums warm up to the idea of artifact retrieval. The idea of studying the captain's megaphone or any of the other 6,000 items brought back since 1987 has a power of its own. My personal favorite artifact, which I personally picked up in 1994, was one and a half children's marbles. I couldn't help but be touched by the recollection of a, a tiny little person, a young person, whose hopes and dreams for the future were so tragically cut short that night. Another startling item is this bag found to have been owned by perfume salesman Adolf Saufeld. This case includes tubes that still contain the oil from which perfumes are made. We conduct extensive research. In 1994, RMS Titanic Incorporated is named Salver in possession of the Titanic by a federal judge. We made representations there in that courtroom that we had that wreck by virtue of the fact we had an artifact from the wreck 
and we wish to arrest it and therefore qualify as right of salva in possession. As a matter of fact, I recall Judge Clark saying that we don't want people fighting over this ship out in international waters and possibly killing each other. The subject of salvaging and exploring the Titanic enters public consciousness in a big way in 1997 with James Cameron's blockbuster feature film. The plot of the film is triggered by a salvager played by Bill Paxton, who is looking for a priceless jewel thought to have been lost with the ship. The shot of the twin submersibles, the Russian-owned Mir-1 and Mir-2 at the very beginning of the film is an indelible image. And when that opening scene came out where the two submarines fly in over the bow, I'd done that same thing. I did that for real. I wanted to stand up in the theater and say that. <laughs> in 1996, the RMS Titanic Company announces their intention to bring back 26 feet of Titanic's 883-foot hull. Up until this point, lumps of coal, cups and saucers, and other small items have been retrieved and carefully restored. Is the effort to raise a piece of the ship itself an act of grave robbing, as some suggest? Or will the Titanic be brought home after 84 years at sea? The long-held dream of raising the RMS Titanic is a practical impossibility, but that does not prevent people from attempting a symbolic raising as new technology allows salvagers to retrieve larger and larger pieces of this once remarkable ocean liner. In 1993, the salvers in possession, RMS Titanic Incorporated, identify a piece of the hull that could possibly be raised. The idea renews some of the debate touched off when artifacts began being retrieved in 1987. I think taking things out of context destroys the context. And I knew how powerful it was to be at the Titanic. The big piece, as it is dubbed, is made of steel one to three inches thick. The method for raising this dense chunk of metal harkens back to the many early schemes to raise the Titanic. Lighter than water, diesel-filled bags. You can agonize for, for hours over some convoluted retrieval process. And to fill a large bag with diesel fuel and drop it to the seabed, attach the piece and recover it, is obviously, in hindsight, the most simple way of doing it. In 1996, to much media attention, a French and American team attaches eight bags, each filled with 5,000 gallons of diesel fuel. The piece makes the long journey, taking the reverse trip that it made 84 years before. But a hurricane is on its way, and as the salvagers start to pull the piece home, there's a problem. The team were unlucky, and sadly, some 30 feet from the surface, the big piece actually was let go and cascaded back to the seabed. The section of sea deck cabins 79 and 81 makes its way to the bottom for the second time. 1998, the RMS team takes another shot at the big piece. A beacon placed there two years earlier brings the team right to the spot, but will they be any more successful this time? After a half hour ascent, the balloons peak above the waves. Finally, a bona fide section of the Titanic, albeit just 20 out of its 46,000 tons, does what the doomed ship could not. After 86 long years at sea, the fabled craft symbolically completes its maiden journey. It arrives safely in America. A ceremony is held as it comes into Boston Harbor on August 21st, 1998. As impressive as any of the objects may be, uh, there is no one that can look at the big piece and not feel the presence of Titanic. With artifact retrieval more or less a fact of life, there are some that still argue that a whole Titanic at the bottom of the ocean, presented on video or film, is more compelling than a warehouse full of artifacts.
at Woods Hole, our feeling was that there was a 